Welcome to another unboxing by theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. Uh, last week at Origins, while at Origins, I purchased this mini game um, from Decision Games from their booth. And it's called Merrill's Marauders Commandos in Burma, 1943 through 1944. This game did come out last year in 2016. I looked at it. Uh, last summer while at Origins, I think I also checked it out at Gen Con and I've looked at it several times online Unfortunately, I haven't been able to kind of pull the trigger until now And you can see I got the game for 13 bucks. So this is a pretty good value. It's a solitaire only game um, Joseph Miranda You'll recognize him na his name. Um, he's done a lot of war games over the years but designed by Joseph Miranda and from Decision Games. And once again, this is one of their mini game series. It comes in a poly bag. And it's it's kind of one of those games that, uh, you know, 12, 13 bucks, you buy it, you play it five or six times and, and may not play it again. But to me, that's worth it. I try to divide the cost by the plays that I get out of it. And that's how I determine the value of the game. And to me, this game looks very interesting. I'm a big fan of World War II. And this game is based on a real-life unit called Merrill's Marauders, who was led uh, by a man by the name of Frank Merrill. And, and, and I think that's him right there on the right side of the camera, or the picture. But they were known for their really behind enemy lines actions uh, during World War II in the CBI Theater or China, Burma, Burma India Theater. Um, Behind the lines, lots of sabotage, lots of recon, long-range recon. They also had a penchant for engaging larger units than, or uh, yeah, more units than themselves. They were always, almost always outnumbered, and they just uh, seemed to do a lot of very, uh, very cool things. So, got the game, very interested in playing it. It is a point-to-point -point movement game, solitaire only. It is driven by event cards. You draw those, you have to meet certain objectives or goals, move around the map, collecting your forces and equipment, engaging the enemy, and you have a certain amount of set uh, action points that are to be used. You do gain more action points, I think from some of the event cards, but also from uh, completing objectives and goals and also winning battles, you'll gain more, uh, more points and Again, basically the game ends if you've accomplished the objective or if you uh, run out of action points. So that's kind of the way the game works. I'm going to go ahead and open this poly bag. I did open it last week after I got it um, and kind of checked it out. Just and I actually ripped the poly bag, which is never good. And this one really is tight in there. Uh, most of the other poly bag games I've gotten, they're kind of loose and easy to get out. But there's the cover, really nice cover. It's uh, very simple. This is the inside of that cover. You can see it gives a little bit of detail. Some of the history here on Merrill's uh, Marauders, what the what the game is about. It uses the Commando series rules. I'm, a nece I'm not necessarily uh, familiar with those. Um, haven't played that game. But you can see operation points are expended to recruit special ops teams, then to move an attack on the map deck of event cards controls the opposition forces. So there you go, it's kind of a simple description. You can see there on the right, it's a solo only game, uh, company and battalion level. The scale is 17 miles per inch. I'll show you the map here in a moment. Playing time is one to two hours, depending on the scenario and how things go. Complexity is pretty, pretty low. I like that for solitaire games and it's very highly suitable uh, for solitaire. It does come with a, an 11 by 17 map, 40 die cut counters, four mission cards, and 14 event cards, plus a four rule, uh, page rule book, which is always good. So there's a look at the map uh, on the inside. So I'll go ahead and put that cover down. Um, here's the back, uh, which is in essence the same thing as what I just showed you, uh, but that's the way that's set up. So I'm gonna go ahead, here's the rules and the counters. Let's check out the map first. It's a paper map, 11 by 17 printed on a legal sheet. So you can see it's, uh, I like the color, I like the green, it really evokes that uh, CBI theater jungle 
uh, feel. I like that. Here you can see the point to point movement. So you're going to move between these points, uh, doing taking an amount uh, of action points to do that. And then you're going to move around to various objectives and towns. Uh, really like solitaire games that print all the information right on the map. And here you go, the very top sheet. It has all the information you're going to need to play the battle results table. Here it's got uh, terrain effects and, and that chart. It's got a track for your KIA, um, an attack, a track for, to track your operations points. And once again, each mission is going to start you at a certain amount, and then you're going to gain and lose those as you use them. Um, but here's uh, different recruiting costs for different parts of, or different of the units. Uh, you can see the airborne units here cost four action points. Uh, some of the cheaper units, supply column and infantry. Um, there's some advanced rules. Don't really know much about that because I haven't read the rule book. Uh, and it, it just, I don't know, to me this game just looks fun. It just looks simple. It looks fun uh, and, and fairly straightforward. So I'm excited to try that out. We'll go ahead and uh, put that map there. Let's go ahead and look at the counters real quick. There are 40 of them. There, we finally got in focus. And you can see they're nice little counters. Um, fairly simple and straightforward. Here are your leaders. You can see there's Merrill and Ord. Um, here's some of the different units. I don't know which is their movement value and attack value. My guess is their first number is the movement value. The second is the attack. You can see here's the Japanese units right there. You've got different assets. You've got air assets. Um, these are your markers for your op points and your KIA. You got some bases. I'm assuming you can get resupplied, potentially gaining action points. Here you've got, uh, looks like airstrips. These are probably objectives. Uh, and, and these you might have to uh, kill those units. But the uh, thing that always stands out in these CBI uh, World War II games is the mule counters. So there you go. You got a couple mule counters. And these are typically transport as they used mules to go through the heavy, thick jungles to get uh, supply back and forth to fighting men. These are airborne units uh, with the airplane denoted on them, engineers using the NATO symbol. So th this is a really cool looking game. Um, counters are tiny, and these are actually very well secured in there. I'm not gonna try to punch them out, but I'll, I'll try to get these out. I'd love to try to play this over the weekend. Uh, and here's the backs of those counters, pretty simple. Nothing uh, kind of identifies their different special abilities, recon, air mobile transport supply. So let's look at the, yeah, so these are the backs of the mule counters. Sorry, it's not focusing. It's kind of dark in my house right now. Um, anyway, you've got uh, supply counters. You can see they say supply on the back of the mules. So that's what they're, uh, that's what they're for. So those are the counters, there's 40 of those. Here are the, and we'll go ahead and go ahead and open these. So here you've got the four mission cards, and these are really tiny cards, uh, but you've got a mission card. Let me bring that in focus. Well, someday, I'm sorry guys, I think at the darkness level, it's raining here today. Um, but you can see it says Operation Mars, it gives uh, some of the information that you're going to need. It actually talks about your mission is to build bases in the spaces occupied by two real objectives. Uh, you have to get to KIA of six or greater. You're going to get nine operations points and 45 recruitment points. So kind of interesting. You're going you're gonna to get those and then try to go about, uh, once again, go about completing that mission. There are four of these. Um, so haven't, once again, haven't really read through those, but you can see there's four different missions, different uh, objectives. So that's kind of cool. And then here are the 14 action cards. Uh, these actually control your enemy units. So you're gonna draw these out and it's gonna tell you what the Japanese are doing. Let's kind of just look at one of these up close uh, here in a moment. So this card says Intel. You're going to keep this card 
and when you use it, you can reveal a couple of objective markers. So I'm assuming that these objectives are hidden as to where they are. So you have to go out and do Intel and, and uh, search those out. And it's going to allow you to take, or it's going to allow you to take an extra, extra action. Um, you can also make an air or water move. So kind of interesting. We'll, we'll see how that plays out. But there are 14 of these, and I think you're just going to go back and forth drawing these and uh, either reshuffling them when you're out or when the mission uh, the mission is over. So there you go. The rules are only four pages. I love war games that have simplified rules. So uh, the Commando mini game series. Here's kind of the general uh, general rules at the top, and then you've got here specific rules for Merrill's Marauders. Really looks interesting. Kind of gives you a look at the different uh, counter types. Here's a discussion about the cards themselves. And then here's the second page of rules. Um, looks like this is the overarching series rules. So there's a lot more detail about how to play that. But looks pretty simple. I don't think this is going to be a difficult game to get to the table. I am not a huge solitaire uh, game fan. I Really, I enjoy interaction. Even in war games, I enjoy the interaction with my opponent. You know, the braggadocio and the threats and the different back and forth. Um, but a game like this, hour, hour and a half, I can play this on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night when I just don't want to watch TV or I just don't have anything to do or, frankly, to unwind from my day job. Um, really looking forward to this. I think this is going to be a fun game, and it's going to be uh, one that I think I'll play fairly often once I get it uh, get the rules down. So look for a series of maybe AARs. Um, also, we might do so. I might do some action points as I go through this, and uh, look for a review here over the next three or four weeks as I get. I'd like to get two or three, maybe four plays under my belt before I start doing any content, uh, just so I'm familiar with the different. Uh, different missions, different objectives, uh, the game functions itself. It always takes a little bit of time. So check out theplayersaid.com. Uh, we have a lot of great content, so give it a check. And uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you also have any other comment or solo games that you like to play or games in the mini or folio series from Decision Games, let me know uh, because I'd like to start uh, getting these. There are several that I'm interested in. So let me know and we'll uh, catch you on the flip side. Thanks.